Nearly 100 Martin County residents making it known they do not support a recently passed mask mandate in the county. But don't try to make me wear a mask. The order requiring people to wear masks in businesses and in outside spaces where social distancing is impossible. Controversial understandings of the coronavirus pandemic have turned data visualizations into a battleground. Coronavirus skeptics and anti-mask protesters throughout the country have campaigned against major public health measures, arguing that the pandemic that affects a few should not impinge on the liberties of a majority to go about life as usual. And while many researchers in computer science and public health seek better forms of data and scientific literacy in order to redress the problem, what does a data-driven approach to understanding the pandemic really mean? For some, this breakthrough moment for data visualization explains the popularity of line charts comparing infection rates across countries or COVID data dashboards that show how the pandemic is unfolding in individual counties. But do the data show that the pandemic is exaggerated and that the crisis is over? Well, unlike the liberal media, numbers don't lie. It's critical, you know what, that we look at these numbers with a clear lens. From 2009 to 2010, nearly 61 million Americans got swine flu. Beyond that fact, we still don't have the numbers we need to fully understand what's happening around us. You can look at some of these charts. I'd love to. What's compelling about the rhetoric here is the emphasis on following the numbers, where people might use the same data from the CDC and WHO and yet draw radically different conclusions. How does this work in practice, and how did we get here? To start answering this question, we combine tools in computational social science and digital ethnography to get a sense for how information circulates. First, we took a bird's eye view by studying half a million tweets and 41,000 visualizations computationally. We then combined that with digital ethnography so that we could identify the phenomena in a more granular fashion. But let's be concrete here. When it came to the computational social science, we first collected all tweets mentioning some combination of the words COVID and data, and if they included an image. Then we created a network of Twitter users and classified the communities using the Louvain method. Concurrently, we classified all of the images that were associated with these tweets using a computer vision model to ask, what kinds of data visualizations do different groups use? Do anti-mask groups tend to use 3D bar charts compared to the New York Times graphics section? We also conducted a digital ethnography using an iterative process. We collected posts where people talk about COVID-related data, then posts where people do their own COVID-related data analysis, then their angry posts where people who hate masks talk about science and data. And we ultimately asked, what does follow the data mean for anti-mask communities? As we followed these different communities, we began to slowly discern different modes of interpreting data. In our ethnographic study of anti-maskers, we show how their discussions exemplify a fundamental epistemological rift about how knowledge about the pandemic should be made, interpreted, and shared. While previous literature and visualization and science communication has emphasized the need for data and media literacy as a way to combat misinformation, this study finds that anti-mask groups practice a form of data literacy in spades. Indeed, these groups often use orthodox scientific methods to make unorthodox arguments. Data visualizations are not a neutral window onto an observer-independent reality. During a pandemic, they're an arena of political struggle. In these discussions, we find that anti-maskers think carefully about the grammar of graphics by decomposing visualizations into layered components, and you can explore these different dynamics in the interactive piece that accompanies this article. Data is not a neutral substrate that can be used for good or ill, and anti-maskers often reveal themselves to be more sophisticated in their understanding of how scientific knowledge is socially constructed than their ideological adversaries. Put differently, there's no such thing as dispassionate or objective data analysis. Instead, there are stories. Stories shaped by cultural logics and animated by personal experience. This story is about how a public health crisis, refracted through seemingly objective numbers and data visualizations, is part of a broader battleground about scientific epistemology and democracy in modern American life. <laughs>